In my previous video on top 10 quirks that I have in Blender, I got a lot of really good comments and feedback and I wanted to cover four things that improve upon some of the items that I brought up. The first one happens to do with the particle system and its up vector direction. If you didn't watch the video, my gripe was that by default when you set particles to a surface, the up vector is 90 degrees to what you generally kind of perceptually think it should be. And this is a good example of that. My objects right here, my widgets, are pointing up, but when they get distributed across the surface, they're laying down. And the solution was to rotate the object so that the up vector was along the local y-axis. Well, somebody pointed out that there's actually a way of doing this that will fix the problem, but it's not intuitive and I don't like what the default is. So let's come down to where we have object properties, and then we come down to relations, and you're going to notice that there is a tracking axis and an up axis. You could be forgiven for looking at the default up axis value of z and saying, well, yeah, the up axis is z, so why is the particle system laying it on its side? Well, it turns out the particle system is actually using the tracking axis, being y as a default for objects, and we want to change this to z positive, and then you get the kind of expected behavior. So, yeah, I'm sure there are reasons why having Y positive as the tracking axis works for some objects, but for general objects that are going to be distributed across the surface using the particle system, you got to change this to Z positive if they're aligned up through the Z axis. So you just have to know to come in here to sort of this non-intuitive area and change that on an object per object basis. One of my other top 10 gripes that I had had to do with view manipulation. Right now I have my view set so that a selected object becomes the view pivot origin. And that can be very useful under some situations, whether it's at an object level or whether you're in an edit mode where you've got a single vertex selected and you want the view to sort of pivot around that. Well, we can also come over and place the 3D cursor at a particular location, and then under view lock in the end menu, you can come down and do a lock to 3D cursor, and then the view moves around and pivots around the 3D cursor's location. And that can be useful at times, but my complaint was the way it behaved. When you change the 3D cursor to a new location, the view tends to jump, and if I come back up here and then I get myself sort of reoriented to where it is, and then I turn off the behavior, you can see that the view jumps, and in some cases it can really jump quite a distance, leaving you kind of bewildered as to where you are hunting to get back to your original view location. So somebody made a great comment that suggested to use a different mode that would ease sort of the pain of this process. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Under Edit and then Preferences, we can come over to Navigation, by default, I have Orbit Around Selected enabled. We're going to turn that off for the time being and then come down to this Depth menu, which doesn't really communicate much until you sort of look at the, the tooltip for it. Let's enable that. Now when I come back into the main scene, the Views Pivot happens under the mouse location. So when I come down, you can see it becomes much more fluid and smooth and I can pan around, and that pivot is always under the mouse location. And that may be very useful. I've been experimenting for a while now, testing that out since that comment, and I'm really kind of liking it. Now, you can kind of mix and match these modes together. So, for instance, if we come back underneath Preferences here, we can re-enable Orbit Around Selection in addition to the Depth function, and that will mean when you have an object selected or an element selected in an edit mode, the view pivot will still continue to be around those elements until you deselect, and then pivot falls underneath the mouse point. So this is certainly another area that you can select as to whether you find this to be useful or not. You can even mix and match it with the 3D cursor, but my experience is that when you start getting these different functions working together, it gets a little janky trying to figure out what's actually happening with the view behavior. But I really like this new operation under the mouse location. I think that's really pretty cool. In my top 10 quirks videos, one of my peeves 
has to do with the shader editor and how it does not remember where you placed the node setup. It actually does re remember where you placed the node setup, but the view position relative to those nodes is not what is saved. So a couple of people actually made the comment that I should just come down into the shader editor, press the home key, and that would recenter everything into the view, and it would at least bring them into the view. Because right now, if I click the bottom part of this table, you just have to go hunting for where they are. But the problem is I'm on a laptop that does not have a home key, so some of us don't have that. I looked it up and it turns out that the function left arrow key does that. Well, what I've done is I've pressed the A key and then I did a frame selected operation, which I have mapped to shift period, and that does that operation pretty quickly also. Well, okay, that helps, but you're sort of still tasked with then doing all the zooming down to kind of get back to where you left when you had gotten there. And in my opinion, the way I would like to see this function is that the view gets saved with the material. So when you hop over to another view, it's basically where you left it. One of the other things that I would love to see happen in Blender that I spoke about in my top 10 quirks video has to do with how Blender jumps you into isolation mode for an object or for a collection of objects. It jumps you in, which is really useful like that. I can just press the backslash key and then it takes me back out. But one thing that it doesn't do is it does not remove any rotation that happens to be there. In this case, my object is untransformed. And so when I jump in, it gives me exactly what I have in the main scene. But frequently, you're going to have objects that are rotated and positioned in the scene which is going to make it difficult if you need to make any kind of editing. Having them untransformed is really useful. So one method that I do is to parent objects to an empty so that I can just transform the empty. The objects internally rotate along with that. So somebody suggested an add-on called Quick Groups, which can facilitate this, and it gives us the ability to jump into that collection of items in an untransformed way. So let's just come up under Preferences, and then we will check here under add-ons, quick groups. That's all it is. It's really simple. It doesn't do a whole lot of things. And I love add-ons that are very simple and straightforward and to the point. And we do have a few operations that you can customize in terms of keyboard commands here. So the first thing that I want to do is establish where I want the instance's origin point to be. So let's do this. Let's do Shift S cursor to selected so it puts it there at the center relative to this object but i'd really like it to be down on the floor if you want to think about it that way so in the end panel over here under view let's make sure and set z location to zero then we take all of the objects that we want to be included and you just press Control g and then we come down here and we say the name should be small table but we, go, we want to customize where the center point is, the origin, and put that at the 3D cursor's location. So that's all there is to it. Now, the brilliance of this is that let's go into the top view. Let's say that I rotate this. So it's, it's at some orientation other than what its original orientation was. And we come in and we want to make a change. All you do with it selected is you press the tab key and it drops you into edit mode. It basically just jumps you into the master collection. So if you've seen me talk about another add-on that does something like this, edit instanced collections, they, these both do essentially the same thing. But this quick group function actually adds a few bells and whistles to this that are really nice. So now we just press the tab key and it jumps us back into the main scene where the instance is. Now, before we do one more operation that I want to show you it can do, let's jump over here and note that it has created a library for us. And inside of the library scene, it's actually put the collection with the components in the collection. So you can kind of come over and reference that. But if we come over to this menu here in the outline or the display mode, we can come down to the blend file itself to see the components of the blend file. And you can see also here is this collection with the four components inside of that. What I want to bring your attention to is the fact, if, especially if you're new sort of to Blender, 
we can come down to the objects themselves and we've got the instance and then we've got the four components in here. So let's actually jump in. Let's press the tab key to jump in here. We can see that, for instance, with the, the stand, the legs, as I'm calling it, if we come over to meshes, you can see that we have three meshes in this object. I've got one mesh for the two bowls and then a mesh for the tabletop and a mesh for the legs. And I've named them appropriately down here. But Blender will reference those meshes to objects, okay? So we've got two bowls, but each of those bowls references that single mesh. So I can make a change to one mesh and that will propagate to any objects that reference that mesh. So that's super useful from a prevention of redundant data standpoint. So what we want to do is we want to come in and I'm going to press tab to take us back to the main scene. Let's say uh, we create a duplicate. So let's do option D. We'll create a duplicate over here and we're going to rotate this one a little bit. But let's say for this one, we want the bowl position to be different than we want this one to be. So let's come back over here to the outliner where we're in file mode. So we're seeing all the bits and pieces that make up this file and scenes and view layers all reference these components. So if we come back up here to collection, we've still got one collection with four items in here. So let's keep that in the back of our mind. In fact, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to rename this table one. And we come back into our view layer, which is our starting point. And this new add on will allow us to do this. So press shift and control and then G. And we've got some options that will come up here. We want to make single user with linked objects that linked objects means the source mesh data that I talked about will be preserved between this new unique collection instance that we're about to create. So you click this one, nothing visually is going to change, but we see down here it says linked or copy objects. So linked means it's going to maintain just original source mesh data without duplicating them. So let's just jump in to this one that we just performed that operation on, press the tab key, and now we can come in and take these two items and we'll we'll move them so they're clearly in a different position and then tab key and so you see this one now has a difference so we've been able to customize them but at the heart of it they're still using the same three mesh components so when we come over here we can see that there's now a new instance collection instance and let's come back to the blend file where we take a look at our collections and we see two collections in fact i'm going to name the new one here two and then we see that there are objects i have four new objects so when we come down to the objects you see we've got soup bowl one soup bowl one dot zero zero one but at the heart of it they're using the same meshes so let's jump back in tab key and let's take a look where we come back over here to the data object properties and you can see right here it says table leg mesh so it's the same mesh we're only referencing when we come down here and we look at meshes we've still got those three source meshes that both of our collections are using and the duplicates of the objects that give us this ability to create changes in one of the collection instances but they're all still referencing down to just those three core meshes and that is what that option did is it allowed us to make a single user out of that one let's jump back in made a single user which is a kind of a fancy way of saying let's make this one unique and the linked option just linked back to these source meshes if we had done the other option it would have duplicated these and it would have given us completely different data so this allows me to come in and make a change at a mesh level and that mesh level will propagate over here but I can now still move the bowls at an object level, which is a higher abstraction layer for each of these. So I really like this new function. I think it's it does some cool stuff, kind of patches in a couple of uh, workflow holes that native Blender has.